So welcome back to the Slide Podcast. We're super excited today. Uh, this is an interview that I know I've been waiting on for a while, and uh, I am joined by my phenomenal co-host, Coach Jen. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm good. I got the phenomenal this time. Yeah, I, you did. I feel very honored. Thank you. you Thank you, you very should. much. Yeah, I'm doing really well. Awesome. Well, we're not going to spend any more time today like chit-chatting like we normally do because we got an exciting guest, and uh, I want to introduce Ben Jenkins. I'm sorry, Joel, take that out. Ben Jenkins, uh, owner, founder of Warstick. Um, you may have recognized Warstick from athletes that you see in, in throughout baseball. Um, they make all sorts of uh, sporting supplies. And uh, so Ben joins us from Warstick. How are you doing, sir? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. Awesome. So I, I really, you know, for the for our listeners out there, um, you know, War Stick is not a, you know, a brand that you're going to walk into a Dick Sporting Goods and pick up a bat. You're not going to walk into an academy. You're a direct to consumer company. So tell us, tell us about the brand of War Stick and like why we should go look it up. Well, I don't mean to correct you, but actually we've been at Dick Sporting Goods and all those things. For oh, really? All yeah. right, well, Joel, we'll cut no, all that crap okay. out. No, it's all good. I actually, well, congratulations. No, that <laughs> I think we, uh, so you're right. We we grew. We started and grew, for sure. And honestly, still focus on being a direct to consumer brand, and still try to feel like that in terms of the way we speak directly to our audience and the way that we service them and things like that. But um, in 2020, ironically, um, you know those retailers that you mentioned, Dick's, yes. Sporting Good, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Shields Academy. I don't. I hate not mentioning in the mall. There, there's. They're everybody's so great. Um, Closeout Bats, Baseball Express, Nutmeg Sports, Baseball Monkey. I'm probably forgetting someone. But um, they all kind of started calling in 2020. And I think that was just a result of that we had spent years and years building a direct-to-consumer audience. It was a bit of a, I mean, it's a very fanatical group of people. And eventually that got, you know, the, the, the retailers got word that that it was becoming mainstream regardless of not being in the retail, which was yeah. a good thing. And, um, we were very wary of it to be honest with you. Um, but then, um, like it's been really great. Um, it's difficult. Um, yeah. it was difficult to get that started. It, there's a lot of new systems that had to be put in place, but at the end of the day, like it's going on the third year of retail and it's just growing and growing and it's, it's great. It's been really cool. So, I mean, my kids think I'm cooler that you can walk into a Dick's Sporting <laughs> Gotcha. Um, but yeah, like I still think we try to keep that direct to consumer feel. Yeah. And, and right. honestly, you know, I guess I've been in, so we live in a little small town in South Carolina. And yeah. so we don't have like, we don't have all of the different choices to choose from. Academy is our biggest. Uh, Dick's actually went out of business in our area. But um, so we don't have a lot. I haven't ever seen a war stick in. Yeah, Academy. So that's that's awesome yeah. to hear, though. Yeah, no, it's been fun. And um, yeah, so I mean, the pitch on Warstick is, you know, I think I'll, I'll tell it 16 different ways, which is a horrible branding thing to do. And I own a branding firm. So um, but I kind of go with, you know, we're always evolving. So I have to kind of sit and go, OK, what are we today? And, you know, we started honestly, I've, I'm I'm 10, 11 years into this. Uh, having started it as a simple custom wood bat operation where you would right. get online, we'd order wood bats, we'd make them, we'd send them to you, right? And then that went on for a while, purely meant to be a hobby. And then about 2015, I kind of realized, hey, this needs to be, I need to focus on this more as a legitimate business. Right. Um, that's when I became partners, the long story to this, but I came, I became partners with Ian Kinsler, who used to play for the Texas Rangers and mm -hmm. for Tigers, four-time All-Star, borderline Hall of Famer. I think he should be in the Hall of Fame, but um, <laughs> his Rangers Hall of Fame this year, great. So I, I was introduced to him and then a guy named Jack White, who's a really famous uh, rock star and people who don't know him definitely know the song Seven Nation Army, any college football game, almost any sporting event in the world. That song is like the, the constant chant in these, in these things. So I got really interesting business partners in 2016, mm -hmm. which gave us, you know, kind of money to have me step away from other things I was doing and focus on this full time. Right. Really grinded for a couple of years trying to figure out, you know, 
what really we are and, and what are we focusing and all that. That really led to getting into metal baseball bats, especially, and then worked really hard at that. And I would say, you know, starting 2019, 20, really the metal bats started to emerge as, hey, these are good enough to be in the conversation with the big boys, right? And that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a very competitive market, market of about six companies, all of, who of which are no younger than, I think one of them is 25 years old. That's yeah. the young rest are very old. So you're competing with some big sporting good companies. And, you know, that's been the focus um, is really um, designed for us is always like making things look pretty, look cool has always been kind of the easier, fun part. And then what happened is that we really worked hard on the performance side to to balance out the creativity with the performance. So you've right. got kind of the best of both worlds. You got the best of both worlds. And then, um, and then when that, and you know, it's kind of like Ian Kinsler playing in the big leagues, like, okay, the bats work, there's no doubt, you know, seeing the bats in college baseball, it's like, okay, these bats work, uh, high school baseball yep. and then balancing out that with the crazy creative side that we always want to maintain. And that's all to me, the glue is all and why the parents like we're sick. There's a, there's a feel Ian Kinsler says, there's always a feel you get from more sick, you know, and it's that warrior mentality. Yep. that battle mentality um you know and there's a message there for kids you know that we like we don't like that they do baseball because they're trying to get to the major leagues we like that they do baseball because it's a teacher it's a humbling it's a humbling sport it's very difficult and going through it makes you a better person yeah it most. does and and that struggle is really the value of it for 99.9 percent of us it's it's what we learn and how we developed our character out of out of what and the hardship we go through. I mean, honestly, I, the whole brand for me was I played baseball at Mississippi state and, and, wow. and barely enough. Um, but did, I struggled through the whole thing and, and progressively got to play more and more and eventually did really well. And then I got to play pro ball, but like, it was all the struggle of all that and all the not believing in my own talents and, and not understanding, you know, how to really balance my mental game that this whole brand is built on. Honestly, it's not my successes as a baseball player. It's my failures and my, my lack, my weakness and lack of self-awareness, you know, that I wish I could go back at, to myself at 14 years old and probably explain to myself. Um, I don't regret it or anything cause I get to do this, but it is built on my, my lack of these things and what the things that Ian Kinsler has that are so, he's so great at, it's not his physical ability as a great athlete, but it's that, the mental side and the way he conducts and, and, and manages that in his emotions. That's so why he made it, you know? So I like that our brand makes really cool stuff that really works well, but there's a message to deliver with those, with those products. And, you know, like the simplest form is just like this, this logo, you know, mm-hmm. we teach kids that it's, uh, you know, one line represents the past, one re- represents the future. Um, it's all about staying in, in the moment, in the middle, right? So we have we have kids cutting this in their hair. I mean, it's cultish behavior. It's a little, but it's cool. Like the kids understand that it's a positive thing that increases the posture and their, their, um, their you know, their confidence and the parents love that as well. So it's a bit of a cult, but in a really good way. Well, honestly, like, I think the story is what caught my attention because I've read so since starting this podcast 10 months ago, I've read so much literature on different bat companies, but I'm, the warrior mentality is what caught my attention. And yep. I, I, you know, I've said this on the show, I, I struggle with self-confidence. My son struggles with self-confidence. And so I gravitate to brands like your brand that says, push through, we're a warrior, you can do it. And, um, like, I, like I, I attach myself to a brand like that so I can appreciate, you know, yeah. just the whole message in the brand. And I'm going to tell you having Jack white as a part of it, I'm a huge rock and roll guy. So like that, that was big. He's a top five guitarist in the, in, you know, I think in history. So, uh, I, I would put slash in there. I'm a big GNR fan by the way, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, but no, I, I love the product, man. And I, I appreciate you. you for being here. So. No, no worries, man. I, I enjoy talking about it. It actually gets me to stop working for a minute. So, <laughs> so I, I definitely don't want to have you on the show. You just released a bat and not talk about the newest bat that you guys released, the Bone Saber, right? Oh, okay. So so tell us about this brand new bat 
and, and why we need to go pick up, pick that one up. Yeah. Can I go grab one real quick? Yeah, go ahead. On, I guess they're right here. How cool would it be to be there? <laughs> okay. Yeah, look at that. So this is the BB core version, right? Right. And, uh, so this is the bone saber. This will be like kind of the bone, the second iteration of the bone saber. It came out about two and a half years ago and did really well. Um, our best selling bat. Um, but it was one of those things that's like, hey, to some extent, it's just like it's not broke, don't uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. But we felt like there were some improvements that we could make. So it was trying to keep everything that was good about it and then build on that. So the thing that was kind of revolutionary was the knob. So yeah. This, this is a fully tooled knob. This is dumb. This is a mini bat, but you can, you know, you know, usually a baseball bat has a ridge. Right. Uh, a ridge to it, right. So um, a lot of the wood bats we were making for our pros, like um, Eric Hosmer, I think I got this idea, honestly, from the bat that we were making from him. It's like really pretty smooth. Um, tapered knob with no lip, you know, right. but something to hold on to. So this is a patented thing that we have and we're the only one that can make it. Um, it's super comfortable. Um, so we would never change that. Like anything that we make with the bone saber tag on it, it's going to be, it's going to have this. And then really what we did to change this bat up is that we felt like it could be a little bit more balanced, right? So mm -hmm. we change the barrel shape into a two, a double taper barrel, meaning like it actually goes here to here and then it starts to taper down from there, okay. but then it actually tapers again. So most, almost every metal bat goes kind of like this. The barrel goes drops. Here, yep. probably down to here. It's actually mm -hmm. one barrel. So definition of a barrel gets a little tricky, but in our mind, um, this is a great hitting surface here for like, hitting the ball the other way and if you get something off the end you've got meat here but it's really all in here it's a it's it's kind of angled um it's just oh i like that yeah it's a, it, it just makes the feel of the barrel huge but like quick um responsive um so this bat like i mean the the compared to the old one like the it's it's more balanced it feels incredibly light i mean we're getting exit velos like 105 kind of stuff um so okay. good and so it's, yeah. it's it's crazy you know the whole thing in bb core is the regulation the 0.50 right right that's a measure like you can think of it it's not really exit velo but it's easy to think of it that way like um, these bats get measured at different points along the barrel and if you surpass 0.50 on average the bat fails so this bat actually passed that 0.50 which i've never seen we've never seen that like usually it's 0 0.498 0 0.9 4 499 maybe but like the whole game is to get as close to the line as possible without going, going over because I mean, we have seen companies, you know, you can, you could, I could, I could send a bat to, to testing and dumb it down and then make them hotter. Well, the reality is that some companies have found out that you actually can't do that because all the other bat companies will turn you in and then you're back. <laughs> right. Um, I have no interest in that. I've never been a fan of like, I mean, our taglines, it's not the weapons, the warrior. Yeah, I'm not gonna be the guy that's like telling my kids to go shave their bats or make you know what I mean it's just kind of like these bats, oh. all these BB core bats by all these companies are tremendously good bats that perform at the standard. So to me, it's it's not about war stick or this one or that one. It's like which one fits you, like what right. what 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 one fits your swing style um, and your style, you know things like that. So there's a lot of great bats out there. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, but the bone savers just. Um, super cool, man. Super clean. It's actually, um, one of the only lighter colored bats in, in college baseball. Um, it's not, it's like a, like that. So it's yeah, we had a, we had a kid ball. on our past on our team this past year had the previous version of that bone saber. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's, it's just a big improvement on something we thought was already good. And it's, I mean, it's. I've, I'm, you know, it's just now getting out onto the scene and, and then there's a youth version of it, you know, and there's yep. a U S the USA version of this, um, is actually kind of getting the reputation as like the hottest, best bat in USA baseball, which is the first one we've ever done. That's so that, huge. 
that you for yeah. in our area like so all of our rec our youth programs have to go through a usa and so any u trip bat or any of the other bats like we can't use them when it comes to tournament time so having something like that is amazing yeah i know it's cool and we just do this thing ever i can't reach it it's over in the showroom but we have a t-ball version coming out that's like no um, way it's the cutest thing ever so well you know the like the handle of course for us and it's um you know it's just all the different iterations that we make we're doing it and then we make special colors of it sometimes and we're coming out with some new oh, yeah. things i miss the special release that you guys had that had the new artwork um you yeah. guys had the I, I missed that last one so I'll, I'll be waiting for the next special release uh -huh. so yeah, well, stuff goes fast, so yeah um so obviously our show is geared towards youth baseball um yep. jen and i are youth baseball coaches we've we've seen witnessed everything that's gone on in youth baseball over the past year and there's been so many great stories that we've you know had the privilege of covering on our show uh yep. we've also talked about a lot of bad situations uh ben just so you know we had um uh, a lady on that was attacked uh Christy, uh, she was an umpire in Mississippi that was attacked. She got a big black eye. She was on our show. Um, yeah. Her trial actually just finished, Jen, by the way. And the lady, oh, after really? the appeal in six months of waiting, when she pled not guilty to begin with, mm -hmm. she finally pled guilty. So, and she she still got no time. So, anyway, but not that sidebar. But Jen, uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Uh, uh, my wife's name is Jen too, so it's going to get really confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about youth baseball man what, what, what's your opinions and what's your thoughts on youth baseball today hmm. <laughs> um i try not to be the old guy and and just all about nostalgia and stuff like that and i think i might be in danger of that except that i've had now i have um three sons mm -hmm. one is night one's 19 he's in college played you know varsity baseball Played all his life, played up through varsity high and baseball. I've got a middle one that's a junior in high school, and then I've got a 14-year-old. So I've been through a tremendous amount of new age youth baseball in the select in 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 in, 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 in little league type systems and and then you know the select type world. So yeah, I've travel seen, ball, yeah. I'm not basing my judgments on my youth only. I've I can even, of course, like everybody else, I, I've spent all my weekends. Uh, at the field at the at the at, well yeah i like to say at the field but mostly you spend more time just at some random uh you know restaurant around the field because that's right around time you know whatever but i've i've been the, i've done the whole thing and so just like everybody else it kind of was like oh we're in uh dallas little league and it was pretty fun it was pretty great because it was a league um, you know, we play on Tuesday nights and Saturday nights, whatever. And it was always mm -hmm. at the same field and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, of course, about nine, 10, you start hearing the pressure of, well, if they want to go on the, uh, beyond this and play anything quality, they're going to have to go to select ball. And this is Texas mm -hmm. and Dallas, and this is one of the two or three biggest markets in the country. So it's not some, I mean, it's, it, there's a lot, you oh, know? Yeah. And then, you know, of course, like everybody else, I went through the whole thing of like, you know, really struggled with my, especially my older kid to have him be on one team one season and the same one the next because for whatever reasons everybody's scrambling different directions and grass is always greener and this and that so he oh yeah you know i went through that and you know um i think for me it comes down to what it what my hot button is and i do relate to my youth is i'll take a 12 year old kid any day in any part of the country i don't care where he's at and i and I will bet a thousand dollars with his parents that I can win this. And I'll say, Hey, Johnny name six kids, first name and last name that you play against this year, that you, you know, that you, that you will play against on other teams, first name, last name, not kids, you know, from school or something like that, but on these other teams that you play. And the reality is that they, they usually can't name even one. Yep. Mm -mm. So that really bothers me because I, can go back to age 12 to you know 11 12 13 i can name 50 guys marco cisneros jason you know jesse cisneros david gibraltar and his little brother um <laughs> right i can go on and on right like these names are ingrained in my mind for a reason and that reason was i had a tremendously awesome youth baseball experience right i did play in 
the select league back in the day, but it was the key word being league. I think this is where everybody goes the wrong direction. They focus on the idea of travel ball and all this and, and this and that and what's wrong with it. I think it's that there's no leagues. I think the concept of a league has been forgotten and unappreciated to an extent and no one thinks about the consequences of what that means. And it, to me, it means you don't have rivals. Yeah. Every You don't have rivals. Therefore, every game really is meaningless. It's just one continuous showcase from age 6 to 18. No different than I was in minor league ball. Why I didn't enjoy minor league ball was when I was at, in high school, well, I wanted to beat my rival. Right. But when I was playing the game, I was playing to win. And that's actually the best way to play a baseball game, by the way. Yeah. When I played at Mississippi State, it got a little harder because I had to play to win a job. Right. And then once I did that, yeah, I wanted to beat Georgia. Really, I wanted to beat LSU. I hate LSU. But that was good. Like, you want to be in that place. When I got to pro ball, it was really tough, honestly, because there was nothing to play for except to win a job. And and that's, to me, exactly, I now realize what um, select ball feels like to kids, which is just a constant stream of, am I good enough? Well, can I, can, can I earn this can job? I good enough for what? To be on this team, to impress right. this coach, to impress, it's always about impressing this coach to impress the next one. Right. As opposed to enjoying the experience of playing with your buddies, getting better together, and going and beat the crap of another team, or get your ass beat, whatever. But you do it together. Yeah, and I mean, where I sound nostalgic is, I mean, yeah, like when we would lose the last game, of the season and we were in third place we cried a little bit because you know what baseball is over because there was nothing to pay for to go pay to the next one right and i know i sound old guy when i say that but the reality is like that's what made you know when my son who my 14 year old son is he's an incredible baseball player he wants to play college baseball but he's an incredible quarterback in eighth grade this year he got hurt he broke his collarbone with about three games left he 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 was tough he asked if he could go back in, but the emotion was, I can't play these last three games, dad. Right. And we play, we play our rival in two weeks. I, I, like, I felt it, man. Like it actually still makes me emotional because there's a real connection there to why he's playing right? and why he cares to play and why we in the stands are excited. So when I go to select baseball and I, you know, I get up at six in the morning to come to an 8 a.m. game. What I experience mostly looking around is complete boredom on all on all fronts, just going through the motions. It just all lacks a purpose for being there and enjoying the moment of doing it and enjoying that season and the next and stuff like that. And I think that's all a matter of the way we do it. Yeah. I think there's plenty of good coaches. There's plenty of kids that really love baseball. Um, there's plenty of parents that support their kids, but honestly, the logistical system of it, I think is just so dumb yeah. because baseball is not about quantity. I mean, reps. Yes, I get it. Reps, reps, reps. But we, we have this thing where we've tricked pe parents into thinking that five, six, you know, hour and a half games on a weekend where a lot of the kids in those games get one, maybe two at bats is quantity is quality is stupid <laughs> right and then you know the idea that you know from a family side yeah i mean you spend your entire weekends are dedicated to this and i would almost be okay with that if it's filled with baseball right but it's not yeah it's filled with traveling to the baseball this the time between the i just drove an hour to get to where we're playing to get there an hour and a half before cool but then now i've got a two three hour break before that before another little one and a half inning one and a half one and a half hour game i'm just not big on wasting time I, i'm I not big on using that and so i would rather see kids practicing more as a team um you do whatever you want on the side with an individual basis but like practicing more as a team with a focus towards winning a game on tuesday night and friday night and that game being seven innings and that you're going to get three or four at bats and i hope you you know like that whole idea of like I didn't get a hit the first time. In fact, I struck out bad. Second time, I got a piece of it. Third time, I got him. Right. So many kids in these select games, they never get to that third at bat, which is hitting 333. And that's baseball. 
you're in the hall of fame so yeah. it's just so much it's just it's kind of like this mix of pressure but like the kids are press putting pressure on themselves not the pressure as teammates to go do what we can to win this game which is what the sport is about right and so a lot of college coaches will tell you um i think we just saw, we we're sponsoring university of missouri this year and the, and the, all these bats will be in the sec which is cool and that yeah. coach we kind, of, we kind of talked to him a little bit and like i hear this from college coaches which is i'm they're getting kids that are all skilled up whatever but they they lack the natural instinct to compete <laughs> you know what i mean and that's a problem they have to spend a lot of time the first year getting those kids to want to compete and even understanding what it meant and quit thinking about yourself and think about the greater good of the right. team that's when you play that's when you go unconscious right when i'm only focused on beating what's in front of me i'm not worried about i'm not worried about myself so much it's a it's a really you know the whole analysis by paralysis and all these kind of things it's like really hard to play like that when you're self-criticizing yourself all the time that, that's it i think and you I, bring up a really good point yeah i think you bring up a really good point about um like the camaraderie on a on a team so if if you're part of a team for one season you play however many tournaments on the weekends and then you move on it's like you said there's no there's no bonding. There's no memories really being made. I mean, yeah, you have events, little moments in your mind that you may think of as an adult when you move on. But I'm the same way as you. Like, I played on the same summer travel ball team from the probably from 12 to 16. And, yeah. and I, like you said, I can name all those girls. I can name their parents. I can now name their kids thanks to social media. You know, we keep in track and stuff like that. But um, I think ego gets involved. Um, I'm about to go into the softball world of softball commissioner for our rec league. So I'm going to find out pretty quickly um, mm. what the, what the true problems are in the, in the <laughs> world of uh, D2 softball, but um, yeah. that's a whole nother monster. But yeah, like yeah. I think ego gets involved. I think um, when, when you talk about not developing leagues, it's because this coach and that coach don't get along and um he hurt my feelings last year, so I'm not going to ask him to have my 8U team. I'm going to do the 8U and the 10U team, and then I'm going to have this whole monopoly. And it's like, you know, yeah, really, is this drama. what it's all about? It's also, it's also a monopoly on fields. I mean, the hardest thing oh, about yeah, starting yeah. A league, the hardest thing about starting a league is that all the tournament the tournaments have the fields eaten up. So that's not so much the case on the weekday. I mean, I think they're. I mean, we're actually working on some things here in Dallas with some with some folks where. Um, we're going to experiment with leagues during the week um, because that's when these fields are free. And actually with the purpose of getting the family's lives back on the weekend, um, um, I can't talk. I mean, it's kind of in, in development, but yeah, yeah. From the field, you know, fields are a major problem and, and just how they're looked up. And then, and, 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 and it's kind of like, you can't play baseball unless you have a place. And that's easily the hardest, one of the hardest things, you know, even to, even to practice, I mean, it's, this is a difficult thing all around. Well, I, I can say, so that the fields has been something that we fought with here in South Carolina because our county owns yep. all the fields and, yep. um, you know, travel ball teams get priority over everything on the weekends. There's no time. And then we're a part of a situation where we have two youth communities in the same city and they're sort of rivals with each other. One yep. owns a complex that won't let you know, well, you have to rent everything. But my, my point is like, I've wanted to get kids together on the weekends and just random kids. I don't have to be with each other's teams. I want them to get to know everyone and just take them to a park and play. And we don't even have the ability to do that because our parks are locked up. Uh, Doing like a coach ball game, Sandlot style thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, just yeah. Start, yeah, he, let yeah, kids come out and play. Yeah. I mean, it's just... <laughs> It's how it's evolved. I mean, there's some good things about it. Um, I think that kids get generally more instruction than I did as a kid, but it comes with a whole lot of baggage. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I don't, I, I'm a big proponent of not specializing. And it's another thing college coaches and no one listens to college coaches and major league scouts as who exactly you should listen to, but there's kids coming to college who only played select baseball all their lives and they didn't develop yeah. their athletic ability and body so they come into college and they get back injuries or something because they're not full athletes yet so like Man. playing other sports is i i could tell you right now if you talk to any 
most pro scouts, they love kids in high school that play other sports like football or basketball. They love it. They encourage it. They like it teaches leadership, competition. It develops more of an athletic ability, you know, a full yep. athlete. You know, I'm all, the, these things really are common sense, but like our specialization in baseball and really other sports, it's not like it's baseball is the only one. Like you've got specialized football now that's all year, specialized baseball that's all year, specialized oh, hockey, yeah. specialized lacrosse. Everyone's full year. So how do you play other sports? I mean, I've had to work really hard with my youngest, for instance, who, um, dude, he'll play anything you throw in front of him. He'll pole vault. Pole I did vault. it. Balls, I did it. Soccer, all that <laughs> stuff, you know, like, and I love it. And and he's going to be in ninth grade. So it's starting to get where we're having to make some choices and that's okay. But he ain't stopping. He, I mean, I don't want him to specialize in baseball for as good of his baseball ability. I want exactly. him to play football because I think it's good for his baseball. And I think a lot of even like coaches, sons, you know, these travel ball parents that just go from team to team, they – they don't want to take that time off to really truly invest in the kid um, yeah. that that fully well rounds the kid to be prepared to be competitive and understand what being a teammate's like. I mean, I think that's honestly and hearing you talk about what college coaches say is we individualize baseball at such a young age and it becomes just solely about that athlete. It's such a young age that that's what that kid thinks. And, you know, that's how they grow up is it's just me. It's not about us anymore. It's just about me. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that, that that's hurting, I think, a lot of the kids. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always so, tried with my card. I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say I'm a physical therapist. So I see the kids now who are in their 20s and 30s that only played baseball. And yeah. what injuries do they have? Shoulders, yeah. backs, sometimes hips, overuse injuries they can't throw the football or the baseball with their son in the yard because yeah. of how hard they were on their bodies 10 years ago. So it's sad, yeah, it's, but it's like but working true. out in a gym, but only doing half the exercise. Right. Yeah. Instead of full yeah. body, you know, like, like the guy that only does, uh, has got the little bird legs. Near the top. And doing like, the yeah. <laughs> We've seen them all every day. That's not a healthy functional way to be a human athlete. You know? yeah. um, I've always, I tried with my son's, one, I, you know, my sons all know how to, they're from Texas. They know how to surf competently, uh, really competently. They know how to fly fish. They love the outdoors. They all do creative things like I do. So I made sure one, that they had a well-rounded upbringing in terms of like putting stuff in front of them that wasn't just baseball. Right. Um, if they gravitated towards it, great. And then once it was like, okay, they, they like baseball or football, whatever it is. To me, it was always have their interests slowly grow over time like this, right? Not this and this yeah. and probably okay. this. This. Because <laughs> there's a time at like age, you know, 13, 14, 15, where it, it gets more serious and it's, but you want them to have the energy, interest, and passion for it to put the work in to get better in it for their That's own right. time. Nope. If they be don't in their heart. That, I mean, I see, there's one term I hate and I know why kids say it. And I know what they mean. And they're expressing their passion for baseball. But it's baseball is like hashtag baseball is life drives me insane because or no off season. Those things drive me insane. So we changed it to like um, more than baseball is life. Hashtag more than baseball is life. Okay. And I'm very big on off season, man. I'm all about off season. And so are, so are my major league players, by the way. You know, like my major league players right now. Um, they're not hitting, they're not picking up a bat right now. They're purposely like, I, I'm, I'm not, I gotta let my body rest, my mind rest, let the stress of all that burn off. I'm playing golf, I'm scuba diving, I'm hiking. I mean, I mean they're doing all hunting, yeah. especially as a big one. They're doing anything but baseball. Yeah. They're keeping in shape, yeah. But like, they let it go because a human and anything that you're doing, like if you're doing it 24 seven, eventually breaks down, just like a car engine or something like that. It's gotta be maintained. Yeah. And so the, the mentality, the, the mental yeah. side, but I do think it's, you know, a kid thinks that, and they think that they're showing off to a coach. Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing all the time. I never stop. I mean, I get the men, I get the mentality, I get the attitude, I get what they think, but they think that that's what coaches want. I don't think that scouts would tell you that's what they think those kids should be doing. Right. You know, I, I just don't, um, I've seen, 
kids that have made it to the major leagues and I've seen kids we all thought that we're going to make it to the major leagues and flamed out at 19 years old I've seen all of it you know and I've really been enlightened and lucky to like the last five years of doing war stick to be working with major league players and you know using our bats and like getting to know those guys has been very 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 interesting because yeah, it's not they're not just natural born baseball players they did put in the work you know but like they're they're great, generally really interesting people that have other in interests, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I've heard a quote, you're know, like a master of anything doesn't actually define himself of, by that thing. And I think that's where we're getting it wrong a lot of times is to master something. When you're that close to it, you actually turn into a hack. Anyway, I'm going down a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I think my childhood was very similar to yours. I remember... Every individual I think that could play that played infield on some of the teams, it was uh, it was pretty crazy. So, what advice would you give parents today from a, an age of six to let's just say six to fourteen? What what advice would you give parents today around like helping their child become a better athlete? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think man, that's a big question. I would say expose them to the, all the sports first. Like if they want to try lacrosse, try lacrosse, hockey, whatever you can afford to let them try, do it. And I know that's challenging. What I see a lot of times is people pushing a kid in a certain sport because the parents want them to do that, or they think they have a better chance and all that kind of stuff. Oh and yeah. Maybe it's, maybe they are being objective and they see what the kid's good at and not, you know, but the reality is like, you just can't, you can definitely cause someone to not love a sport by what you put them through. But you really can't truly make a kid love a certain sport, like to the degree where they're going to take it a long way. Like, you know, even high school, even, you know, especially college these days is pro ball. Like if there is not the passion, the natural passion to spend that much time with it, why would you force that? Right. So like that's the big one is is like present them with things, encourage them to try hard at it. And then when they pick what they really like, definitely make them understand especially in something like baseball that repetition is important you know they i mean it's not it's not a natural ability sport and things like that but like yeah. i just they got you know a lot, i have my middle son uh 16 years old now he was a he's a junior in high school great catcher all his life really good baseball player but i can't tell you the amount of joy he gets out of playing high school linebacker in texas like <laughs> Oh it's, yeah, Friday Night Lights. It's big deal yeah, in Texas. Nothing like it. Like, and it's it's like it's a special love, man. Like, and it's, I mean, the amount of fun for him in that sport, and the amount of the teammate he is to his teammates, and the leadership that he he does, and just how in it he is, it fires me up so much that when he told me at the beginning of last year, he goes, "Look, Dad, like I've kind of taken these things to this extent, and I know I can play high school baseball, but." what i'm doing i want to play college football i want to be in the weight room every minute that i can and i can't do that playing baseball right and people are like you're letting your quit kid play baseball quit baseball and i'm like do you know how happy i am that my kid loves something that much that's Hell right yeah. mm -hmm. I, I told him quit tomorrow bro yeah my own war stick so <laughs> it's all about that like that to me like i'm so like and then seeing him you know when he was a, he was the captain of the football team this year he just blossomed and just seeing him out there doing his thing, man. Like it just, it I think a me. lot of it, you know, we, we got to get to know our kids and you yeah, got to get to know, you got to watch and listen, you got to listen right. and watch and you, and you can tell like, just like joy is something you can see, like just, yeah. just watch. you know what I mean? Just watch and observe, take yourself out of it, take whatever you were good out of it and just let that flow into what, let them lead you into what they're going to do. Because it ultimately like my, my 14 year old is a different beast. Like the kid will not come in from the front yard ever, like <laughs> ever. Like dad, throw with me, dad, throw with me, dad, hit with me, dad, throw with me, dad. Like, and I mean, it's like, I don't, I'm not, I never say no, because why would I do that? But like, I'm not, you know, um, if you have to have a kid in a sport where you got to say, hey man, you probably should go practice, uh, do some extra. Well, yeah, that's just their level of, in that's just reflecting their level of interest. I mean, yeah. make sure they understand Hey, I, they need to understand where that's going to end up, but that's okay. Cause it's more about finding what you really do want to go spend that extra time with, you know, it may not be sports by the way, 
and that's super okay. I don't play sports anymore, but I like my job. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's, I, I love, you know, I, if Bryce and our other, our, one of our other hosts was on here, I, you know, my, I had dreams of playing in the MLB. Um, mm-hmm. And I wasn't that good. I realized it. I probably could have pushed it a little bit further, but, you know, and I love coaching Little League, but my son, he just hadn't found that love yet. And so, you know, we've gotten offers to play for some travel teams. And I'm like, look, he's just not there yet. And, you know, right now, dude, he is so involved in Elvis, Prince, uh, Michael Jackson. (laughs) Like, that's what he loves. That's awesome. And I'm just going to keep feeding whatever he loves because it may not be the thing that I want him to do most. And because I'd love for him to be that middle linebacker and, you know, love and smacking people. But, you know, I got to let him do his thing. Yeah, you got to let them do their things and that's just when they're going to be happiest and it's when they're going to work the hardest i think that's what people don't realize when they love it that's when they're going to do the work because they're doing it for themselves and that's who that's they right. should do for. you know that's like right. honestly, you yeah. know it, it, baseball is such a game of failure that if you if you not if you don't love it enough the failing will just crush you so yeah. it, it's, it's hard. yeah it's a miserable sport to play <laughs> 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 It's like being a Marine. If you don't love the misery, like, why would you do that? <laughs> right, right. Well, Ben, man, I thank you so much for your time. I don't want to hold you up any longer, but I got one question for you. We ask all of our guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big music guy, but this is a hard question. If you're walking up to bat today, oh, what's man. your walkout song? Oh, man. It's weird. I've almost never thought about that. Yikes. You got me right there. I mean... I think I'm going to have to say um, Jack White, Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground. Okay. Okay. There you I go. Have to look it up. That's my gut thing. If I had to go non Jack White, I would go. Oh, man. God, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big walk up song guy, to be honest with you. Okay. I okay. like batting gloves. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll stick with the Jack White thing. Okay, all right. Hey, were you a White Stripes fan before Jack came aboard? Yeah, strangely, for sure. Like, you know, in my, as I started my own business as a designer and branding, you know, it's constantly on the computer, just hours and hours of design on the computer. So one of the things I do, and a lot of designers, we listen to music repetitively mm-hmm. because it puts you in a in a zone, but you don't hear it anymore. Like it's there and the groove's there and the energy's there, but like, listening to the same albums over and over is kind of like a design trick in a way it's a focus trick okay for sure jack's early stuff white stripes all that stuff was one of those rotations for sure so yeah when it came along and i got to meet him and stuff it was definitely um very surreal it's normalized on me now but i try to always remember that it's (laughs) really lucky to have it going on and to have him it's different it's more of a He's more of a brother to me now and like a guy, a fellow artist that I just know when I wake up in the morning, he's working yep. and I'm doing something badass. So I'm like, I better get up and love that. Yeah. That's awesome. That, that's well, the thing of it. And I'm always inspired by his just work ethic, man. It's insane. That's incredible. That's great to hear because I'm going to tell you as a fan of music, man, we need it now more than ever. So yeah. it's he's uh, keeping rock and roll alive. That's for sure. That's it. Well, awesome. Ben, thank you again so much. Hey, tell us, uh, how do we find Warstick? How do we find information about the company? Just warstick.com, W-A-R-S-T-I-C.com. And then, you know, we've got the Instagram and the, this is where we're pretty active and Facebook for the parents. Awesome. So, yep. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much, Ben. If you'll hold on just one second. Um, but for all of our listeners out there, thank you guys very much. And until next time, Jen. We'll catch you on the slide. We thank you for toughing it out and pushing through. Now, let's go teach the world great sportsmanship, leadership, to go inspire someone through your dedication and excitement for the game. Make sure to smash the like and follow button on all social media at the Slide Podcast Show and the Slide Pod on Twitter. Plus, leave us a review and feedback. Until next time. Until next time, we'll catch you on the slide. On the slide.